still praise you if you give me a Hello, you are welcome to church today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we bless your name because you are so good to us. We thank you because you love us. Thank you because you created us in your own image. Thank you because of who we are in you. Thank you for Jesus Christ. Thank you for the word we, that we have access to. It is by your grace that we have access to your word. Let your name be glorified. Father, Lord, we pray that your mercy will speak for us today. That you open our heart of understanding to see that which you want us to say. Teach us your word. Help us to learn. Help us to hear. And let your son speak that which you want us to hear. So that your name will glorify in our life. Father, we pray, Lord, that today's service will glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by that prayer. Please, as we proceed to today's service, let your heart be attentive and let your hair be connected to Christ Jesus. God bless you. As a continuation of the Supremacy of the Word of God series, last Sunday we treated a message titled Co-Creators with God. A co-creator is one who is capable of comprehending and modifying the universe to create new things as God creates. Now in the co-creation process, we can create as God created and we can also create with God simultaneously. Now this applies to everybody because we are his image and likeness. To be co-creators with God is to carry the consciousness that we are one with God. But to help us fully utilize that oneness, we must carry the consciousness that God is God Almighty and he can do all things. If we are one with God, we are always in his presence and his presence is in his word the consciousness we have of his word is what makes us complete when we speak his words we release spirit and life into the atmosphere and what we release brings results now i've got a question for you what results do you want and what will you create today the answer to your first question will determine how you approach the second question Hello again and welcome to another beautiful Sunday service at the Lighthouse Digital Church. I hope you thoroughly enjoyed this recap. I thoroughly enjoyed service last Sunday as well as watching the replay. I hope we all enjoyed today's message together. Now let's head over to the main service to hear today's message. Bye bye now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for your blessings upon our lives. Thank you, Father, O Lord, for what you are going to do this morning. We give you praise and we worship you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Before we go into the service, first, I want to say thank you very much for being in church today i also want to use this opportunity to say happy father's day to every single father in the house or wherever you're watching this from i would just want to encourage you that listen you are appreciated you know you're appreciated beyond measure you know and uh, for god making you the head of the family my prayer for you is that you will not fail in that responsibility in the name of jesus the body you carry you know the fear you also carry as a man not even know what you got to do at times I just want to salute you. I want you to know that from all of us at the Lighthouse, Happy Father's Day.
from my heart to yours <laughs> bless you bless you man all right um the other thing i want to say quickly is uh this week i started a long project of mine that's been on my heart called the identity of the believers devotional daily devotional so i've been shooting two three minutes two three minutes four minutes max videos which we've been posting to instagram uh youtube and and TikTok actually uh, so those messages are short they are meant to give you nuggets of wisdom around the identity that you now have in Jesus so this actually will be a tool that we're gonna gonna be using for our house fellowship love cells later in the year when we start uh, by the grace of God we will be launching the devotional book in the next month or so uh, just put us in, a, in your prayer but please follow the devotional share with people that you think might benefit from it people that may be struggling on that religious mindset share with them so they can know uh, what they now have in jesus you know and i believe as you share that it's going to be a blessing to someone praise god forevermore now the message that god placed in my heart this morning is actually a profound message is a continuation of what we have been teaching for some time called the supremacy of the word of god but i want you to pray for me you know before i share the message because the message could be misconstrued so i want you to pray for me i'm going to give you a moment for like you know, 10 seconds or 15 seconds just pray for me so that i will be able to share this message uh, with the intention that god had in mind to not be a message that will offend somebody but to be a message that will encourage someone to take advantage of what christ has already done for us so i'll bow my head for a couple of seconds I'll allow you to pray for me and then i'll come back and then we can start the teaching is all right thank you so much Amen. Amen. father i receive the unction to share your word with clarity to your people so that everyone will live here today understanding that the work is already complete from your side and that we are only required to cooperate with your laws with your spiritual laws that you set in motion that you set in place for our benefits help me O lord to articulate your words in ways that your people will understand with the simplicity of the gospel and lord i pray that your holy spirit will take these words from the lips of mine and write it in the way only him knows how to write that everyone will live here, oh God, energized, full of hope, and faith will be built in our hearts, knowing, Almighty God, that it is possible. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much for that prayer. You know, I, I'm, I'm really grateful for your prayers. So, this morning, I'm going to be talking about stepping into the matrix stepping into the matrix stepping into the matrix the heart the mouth and the word stepping into the matrix the heart the mouth and the word you may have uh, watched the movie the matrix before and the whole construct about the matrix is around a belief system you know essentially if you think you are trapped you're trapped if you think you're free you're free and essentially it's talking about a computer program in that in that movie the matrix that everybody's in a computer program and it can some sort of simulation and what they really see as the real life is not the real life and therefore everybody's basically working or living in a simulation some sort of simulation that puts that person's life in a particular position but they thought they're living the real life but they're not really li living the real life and here comes a guy called called neo who also was was asking questions about you know this there's something wrong there's something wrong there's something wrong can i live a better life can i live a better life and he was able to then become this liberator who came and set people free you know people that want to get free anyway from this doldrum or this paradigm that they live in that has put their life in a particular fix that is the concept around the matrix in the movie that movie is actually quite um i think it's quite spiritual if you have a moment go back and watch it but you notice that in, in if when you watch it you look at it from the point of view of what i've explained it will make a lot of sense to you around that you are confined in a bubble by your belief system all right so but today i'm going to be talking about the matrix stepping into the matrix 
essentially you could, you could think about it like this step out of the matrix of the world and step into the matrix of the lord all right something like that so step into the matrix the heart the mouth and the word of god all right so the supremacy of the word of god is still what we're talking about but today we're just looking at the the the, the try the, the triangle formed by the heart the mouth and the word of god and how that is something that god has put in place to help you and to help me to take advantage of what christ has already done by way of definition we go back and define what the, the word supremacy mean the word supremacy essentially means that which is of the highest ranking or highest authority a way to understand the matrix is when you think about the supreme court you know if you have a case in court and that case is judged at the lower court and you are not satisfied with it you can take the case to what they call the supreme court and what is whatever the supreme court judges that is the final word for that case so what we're saying here with the supremacy of the word of god is that the word of god is the final authority in this life why do we know that well hebrews 11 3 we've covered that over and over again says by faith we believe that the world was framed the world the world system was framed set in motion set in place by the word of god so the word of god became the construct or the architect through which god set the whole world system in order so you you know about the law of gravity the law of gravity is a law that says whatever goes on must come down so everything is being pressed upon by this law of gravity now you don't have to believe in the law of gravity whether you believe in the law of gravity or not the law of gravity works so because the law of gravity works whether you believe it or not it is it it makes sense for you <laughs> To understand how the law of gravity works so that you can align yourself with it with it and it will, it will work in your favor so when the Wright brothers were trying to make the construct of an airplane they had to understand the law of gravity they have to look at how can we make the law of gravity work for us so they studied the birds look at how birds fly against the law of gravity and so how they could then put that to use to create a construct that we call airplanes today so they they understood the law work with the law of gravity and it worked for them so what i want to teach today what god is placed in my heart to teach today is about this matrix that rules everybody's lives and how we uh, and everybody's life rather and how when we align ourselves ourselves with this matrix it will work wonders in our lives okay so the supremacy of the word of god is the is a nucleus of the matrix is a nucleus of matrix but i'm going to show you what the matrix is today from the point of view of god and how you can make the matrix to work for you okay now the word of god is the final word make the word of god the final word in your life do not make the word of god to uh, be subjected or subjugated to the words of your friends or the words of your neighbors or the words of the economists or the words of the doctors or the word of, of the education person no don't do that you know when you allow the word of god to be subjugated to other um viewpoint or perception then the word of god will not work for you the book of mark chapter 7 verse 13 mark chapter 7 verse 13 jesus christ says something that is quite profound he says he was talking to the pharisees of his days the religious leaders of his days of his days he was saying making the word of god of non effect through your tradition which you have delivered and many such things like many such thing many such like things do ye i'll read that again making the word of god of non effect through your tradition which you have delivered and many such like things do ye what was the background behind what jesus christ said here the background actually was that um um jesus christ was telling them that they take the word of god and misrepresented it to people that they go all out to go and try and make uh, convert one person to one person to become to come into their religion religion and when the person become comes into their religion they make the person to be worse off than the person came and he said they take the word of god and twisted it vis-a-vis -vis their traditions that it is their traditions that they have weaved into the word of god that make the word of God of no effect. Essentially, the word of God has power, is supreme, but the word of God can be made to be of no effect in your life. 
when you subject it or view it through the lens of your tradition, of, of, of your belief system, of, of your thought patterns that contradict the word of God. Let's look at that text again and pull out a couple of things. You make the word of God of no effect through your tradition, which you have delivered, and many such like things do ye. In the preceding texts or verses before this verse, they, Jesus Christ was giving them an example of a tradition that they have used to uphand the word of God. For example, God says, Honor your father and mother so that your days may be long. And an honoring father and mother essentially is essentially means take care of your parent, respect them, honor them. That's what the, the word of God says. But these religious people have trained the people that they brought into their midst to say, if you have made, uh, if you have the, what, the, the money you're meant to give to your mo mother or your father, or what you're meant to use to take care of your parent, if you have, if you have made a vow to the church. And you say, oh, I'm going to give this 100 pounds or 200 pounds or 1,000 pounds to, to the church as a vow. Then you are fulfilling your obligation to your parent. Yes, I was saying to them, they took their traditions about placing the church above relationship to your own parent. And they've made the word, that word of God of no effect. So essentially, there are traditions that we've believed. What we have been told. That when you look at them in context of the finished work of Jesus Christ, they don't add up. And when we choose those viewpoints above what the word of God says, or I will say above the finished work of Jesus Christ, then we will not get results that God wants us to get. And it's not because the word of God is powerless. It's because we have chosen a viewpoint that contradicts the word of God or the way the word of God works. So now I, start, I began to look at this text critically and if you go back to the text you make the word of god of no effect essentially you make the word of god uh, useless how through your tradition this tradition is what you have delivered so look at this the tradition that they have delivered makes the word of god of no effect and then you know there's a colon if you go again look back look look at the text again there's a colon after delivered and if you know as i've said in the church what is on the right hand of the colon is an outcome of what is on the left hand side of the colon. So the outcome of delivering this tradition is that they began to act the tradition out in their lives. So they not only just deliver the tradition, they begin to act according to the tradition. Okay. So when, but the ultimate aim of this is that this tradition that, deli that was delivered and that has been acted out nullifies the word of God, makes the word of God inoperative in their lives. Okay, now the question now is, what is this tradition? So I went to check the meaning of the word tradition, and the word tradition used in this text is from the Hebrew word, Hebrew word, uh, the, from the Greek word rather, paradosis. And you know what paradosis means? Paradosis means rituals and precepts passed down orally from one generation to another so you see here when he says you make the tradition of, you make the word of god of no effect through your tradition which you have delivered he's talking about how they deliver the tradition this tradition the tradition was delivered orally so it was spoken out of the mouth and it was passed down from one generation to another one generation to another so what this means therefore is traditions are first communicated by words and once it becomes a belief system it controls your life and perspective and it will make you to believe things and do things contrary to the word of god and you will think oh i'm still doing the work of god or work of god or i'm still following god no let me also give you another meaning of paradosis another meaning of paradosis which is actually quite humbling when i found out was the word the act of giving up or giving over which is done by word of mouth or in writing think about that <laughs> the act of giving up or giving over which is done by word of mouth or in writing essentially it's talking about traditions are communicated by words and it could also be communicated by something that is it becomes a code something that is written down but the primary aim of this tradition is to make you to give up or to give over 
in fact the other translation the other meaning of this same word paradosis means to so the surrendering of cities it's like when somebody comes to attack a city and the city is surrendered it's, come and take it come and take it come and take it you know what this is mean? this is saying actually is like you can surrender your life over to things that god did not want for your life you can surrender your life over to lies to things that will take you captive when you believe a tradition above the word of god this is actually very powerful so if we allow ourselves to be controlled by the whims and caprices of men by the traditions of men by things that are not really really written in the bible and i'm talking about things in the church you know things in the church because oh don't do this we don't do that like that here but show me where it is written in the bible you can't find it for example i'll give you an example somebody says oh don't eat pork it's forbidden to eat pork if you eat pork you become defiled hang on a minute in the new covenant the bible says no food no food uh, should be rejected when you get a food pray on it and bless it what that if you if you don't if you don't feel like eating the food don't eat it but don't say oh the the, 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 the law of god forbid me to eat this kind of food under the new covenant every food is received with thanksgiving and you bless it and thank god for it do you see what i mean so you can take that tradition as oh man we don't eat pork here and then it, it, it makes the word of god of no effect but the primary aim of tradition is to cause you to surrender yourself to give yourself over to give up so that the word of god will not do what the word of god has the power to do in your life so once a tradition becomes a belief system it becomes a way of thinking and it's through that way of thinking that belief system that you now filter all the information that you receive and that filter we either keep you bound or set you free and that is where the word matrix comes to play okay so as i teach today on the word on it on the message i've titled stepping into the matrix the art the mouth and the word i'm going to be talking really to you about the matrix becoming that belief system that you hold that is keeping you bound or setting you free even though the word of god is supreme and can change your life it everything depends on your belief system so let's go through and do some definition the word matrix what does it mean according to the miriam website dictionary a matrix is something within or from which something else originates something else develops something else takes form so that's the first definition a matrix is something within within or from which something else originates develops or takes form for example the womb of a woman you know a child develops in the womb from the womb and comes out from there right comes out i mean doesn't come out from the womb like that but comes out this that's where the baby is nurtured first right it's nurtured and protected and develops 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 and then from there it goes out okay another division of the matrix is a material in which something is enclosed or embedded for protection or study so you take something and you put it in something else that which holds that which you have put it inside that which you hold is is the matrix so i began to search for the word matrix in the bible and i found a number of them and but every single one of them that i found relates to something that will surprise you let's go into the text exodus chapter 13 verse 12 the bible says that you shall set apart unto the lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that comes comes of a beast which you have the males shall be the lords exodus chapter 34 34 verse 19 all that opens the matrix is mine and every fossiling among the cattle whether ox or sheep that is male numbers chapter 3 verse 12 and i behold i have taken the levite from among the children of israel instead of all the first one that opened the matrix among the children of israel therefore the levite shall be mine numbers 18 15 everything that opened the matrix in all flesh which they bring unto the lord whether I, whether it be of men or of beast shall be mine shall be thine nevertheless the firstborn of man shall thou surely redeem and the firstling of unclean beasts shall thou redeem so you see the word matrix 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 and you know the word the matrix what it means in this um hebrew text the matrix in the hebrew text of the old covenant is from the word rakam and rakam really means the womb 
so the matrix is the womb so now if you go back to the meaning of matrix that we defined earlier it says something within or from which something else originates develops or takes form right or something in which something is enclosed or embedded so here we see the picture that the womb is a metonym for the matrix and the matrix is a metonym for your heart which is what i'm now going to prove how the womb becomes the heart that's what i'm going to be trying to prove now so as a child is nurtured in the womb and comes out of the womb later to become the product that we see so your own future comes from the matrix which is the source which is your heart i want to show you how the matrix which is a source and the heart becomes a source how they are all linked together so go with me to proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 in the kjv says keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life keep your heart with all diligence who is to keep the heart my responsibility and your responsibility we are to keep our hearts from with all diligence what does the word diligence mean it means that which will you work on continuously so essentially god says it is your responsibility to protect your heart from infiltration by the enemy why is your heart important to be protected from infiltration because out of the, your heart are the issues of life so the it in this text it relates to your heart so you can say for out of your heart are the issues of life okay i then went when to look at the issues of life what does the word issues what does it mean you know the word issues in this text from the hebrew language is from the word totsa i know what it means it means boundaries it means source of life it means escape from death <laughs> so if you apply this back to the text you can say for out of your heart are the boundaries of your life out of your heart are the source of your life out of your heart are the ways in which you escape from death essentially your heart determines how far you go in life your heart determines the source of your life your heart determines how you are able to escape from death is it no wonder that the enemy tries to fill our heart all the time with fear and anxiety because if the enemy can get into your heart it's got you your heart is the source of your life but remember when we defined the matrix before we said the matrix is something from which other things develop that is the source so your heart is the source of your life your heart is the source matrix is a source your heart is a source so your heart really is the matrix so you can read Proverbs 4 verse 23 as keep your heart with all diligence for your heart is the source of your life your heart determines the boundaries of your life your heart helps you to escape from death so your heart is the matrix your heart is the matrix now let's look at how jesus christ talks about the heart look at luke chapter 6 verse verses 44 to 45 the bible says every tree will be revealed by the quality of fruit that it produces you will never pick figs or grapes from thorn trees people are known in the same way people are known in the same way in which way in the same way we can see a tree produces fruit we say ah this is a good tree it's producing fruit we the same way we can know a human being by the fruit that they produce but it doesn't stop there he now says out of the virtue stored in their hearts good and upright people will produce good fruit likewise out of the evil hidden in their hearts evil ones we produce what is evil why for the overflow of what has been stored in your heart will be seen by your fruit and will be hard in your words now let's take a moment there this is just Christ speaking just Christ is saying out of the overflow of what is stored in your heart the womb the womb or the heart or the matrix out of the overflow of what is in your matrix your heart your womb it will be seen in the fruit you produce and in the words that you speak so the words you speak tell us what you have stored in your heart 
the words you speak tell us what you've stored in your heart and what you've stored in your heart will play itself out in the fruit that you produce Jesus says that's the way to know so you will know a person about what they fill their mind with with the fruit that they produce and the words they constantly speak out of their mouth why is that the heart is filled with a picture the mouth says the picture the heart is filled with a picture the mouth says the picture you know the story when God caused confusion at the Tower of Babel before then God says I have looked at the imagination of the heart of men is constantly wicked so that tells you another thing the heart is where imagination is formed imagination means image plus nation imagine a nation imagination imagine a nation or image that formed a nation so it is the image you hold in your heart that becomes the nation that you live in the image you hold in your heart becomes the nation that you live in this thing is very important the image you hold in your heart the image you hold in the matrix becomes the cocoon that you live in the image you hold in your heart in your matrix in your womb becomes the outcome the the cocoon that you live in that's why i always say to people creation happens twice you cannot create anything that you have not thought about you cannot create anything that you have not had a picture in your mind it's just like for example if you want to build a house if you want to build a house you have your dream house that you want to build you will have seen the picture of that heart in your heart in your heart before you actually start to build it when the the, the house is seen physically outside is uh, it's an anticlimax because it has already you've already seen the house in your heart it was like I was talking to Aji, my friend Aji the other day, and she was saying that when she moved into her house and she was walking through the walls, it was like deja vu. Why? Because in her heart, she has imagined that house and decorated it over and over many, many times before there was even a plan drawn, before the house was even erected. So when the thing came to life, it was like, I've already seen this, I've already lived this. Where? In her imagination. So imagination is image that formed a nation. You need to form the image of the nation you want to live in. Where? In your akam, in your womb, in your matrix. So when I ask you to step into the matrix, I'm asking you to step into your heart and let the life of God that is in your heart now begin to flow out. Allow God to paint new pictures in your heart so that you can live the life that God has ordained for you. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the overflow of your heart, the mouth speaks so the principle of the mouth speaking what the heart is filled with is replete in the bible let me show you an example you know in ecclesiastes, ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 3 in the kjv the bible says if the clouds be full of rain they empty themselves upon the earth then he has colon again and if the tree fall toward the south or toward the north in the place where the tree falleth there it shall be <laughs> this scripture is absolutely beautiful you know what he's saying he's saying if the clouds is full of rain eventually the that cloud will empty itself right upon the earth now what is rain the bible says in book of isaiah chapter 55 verse 11 that as the rain and the snow comes from heaven to water the earth so shall my word be so the word of God is the rain. If the clouds of your life is filled with the word of God, that heart will produce the word of God and allow it to water your life. Essentially, it's talking about the fact that if you fill your heart with the word of God, with the promises of God, it will come out of your mouth. It will water the earth. But it doesn't stop there. If the tree falls, so when it comes on the earth, it's going to touch things in your life. And whatever it touches, whatever you want, you, whatever, whatever the, the, the water that's coming from the clouds, whatever it touches on the tree is actually going to affect the trees that it touches that 
the tree will fall wherever it asks it to go. Essentially, it's basically saying you can send the word of God on an errand in your life, but the word of God must fall preoccupy your heart. The cloud must be full of rain. The heart must be filled with the word of God. And then when the word of God is overflowing in your heart, it will come out of your mouth. And as you say it out of your mouth, it will begin to produce results in your own life. That is the earth here. All right. And when it produces results in your own life, it means it will set things in place in your own life that you want it to set in place. If you say, this is where I want this to be, it will be there. If you, This is where I want that to be. It will be there. So essentially, it's talking about the fact that you can fill your heart so much with the word of God that you have authority over situations in your own life. You can do that because if the class is full, the clouds be full of rain. It must empty its, itself, uh, themselves, sorry. If the clouds be full of rain, they must empty themselves upon the earth. If your heart is filled with the word of God, that word of God will come out of your mouth. And when it comes out of your mouth, remember, words are containers of power. When the words of God come out of your mouth, it will set in motion. Anything that you could say, it should set in motion out of your life. So if the word of God is not working for you yet, don't feel, under, don't be, don't feel condemned. It's because in the area where you are speaking the word of God, you have not accepted the truth in your heart yet. The word of God has not become flesh in your heart. When the word of God becomes flesh in your heart, in the area where you believe God for, it will produce result. Here is a truth that I want you to write down. For faith to work, for faith to work in your life, it must be based on the word of God. It must be stored in your heart. It must be spoken out of your mouth. And that is the, the heart, the mouth, and the spoken word connection. The heart, the mouth, and the spoken word connection. So the promise of God that you are vocalizing, that which you're believing God for, must be found in the word. You must find that where God has promised you what you believe him for in the word. Find that. Take that and store it in your heart. Let your heart be filled with it. Like the clouds are full of rain. Let your mouth speak it out of your mouth. That is the way to make your faith to work. Next week, by the grace of God, if I get to finish this one, I'll be speaking out how to make your faith work. I'll be going in, in depth into this. But for now, just write that down as the principle. So now let's now look at the principle, uh, the parable that Jesus Christ shared that will help us about, you know, the heart, the heart and the word of God. All right. So there's a scripture here in Mark chapter 4, verses 1 to 10, verses 13 to 20. Or Luke chapter 8 from verses 4 to 5. So I'm going to look at Luke because you can go later and read the one in Mark, but it's the same thing. The Bible here says, When a large crowd was gathering together and people from city after city were coming to him, he spoke to them using a parable. He was talking about Jesus. He says, The sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Verse 6, and some seed fell on shallow soil, shallow soil covering the rocks. And as soon as it sprouted, it withered away. Why? Because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. Verse 8, and some fell into good soil and grew up, produced a crop a hundred times as great. As he, as he said these things, he called out, he was ears to hear. Let him hear and hear the words. Anyone who can hear what I'm saying, hear this truth you know pay attention to it so verse 9 his disciples began asking him what this parable meant and he said to, the, to his, and he said to you who have been chosen it has been granted to know and recognize the mysteries of the kingdom of god but to the rest it is in parable so that though the seeing they may not see and hearing they may not understand so just kind of saying you are the chosen one and every one of you right now giving life to jesus christ God has chosen for you to know how his kingdom works. So this parable about the sower and the seed is absolutely important for you to understand it because it will help your faith to grow. He's saying here that this is actually the parable of all parables. You know, now um, that in the book of Mark, which you can read later, Mark chapter 4, verse 1 to 10, just kind of was telling them, if you don't understand, I think it's verse 13, Mark chapter 4, verse 13, he's saying, if you don't understand this parable, how can you understand all parables? Essentially saying, this is the parable of all parables. Once you understand this parable, 
you understand the message of Jesus. You understand how the kingdom works. That's the reason why I ask you to pray for me at the beginning of the service. You know, because this scripture is absolutely beautiful. This I can sp I can I can I can, I can preach a whole month on this, but I don't have the time. But I want to show you something here that I learned. He's saying in this stuff, this parable of all parables, that the sower is is the one who sows the seed. But what is the seed? The seed is the word of God. Let's go into the text and read it. The meaning of the parable is this. It's talking about the parable and the meaning of it. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So the seed is the word of God. The seed now is the word of God. Okay. Now, those beside the road are the people who have heard. They have heard. But when they heard the word of God, the devil comes and takes the message away from their heart so that they will not believe. All right. So essentially saying, when the message comes, the word, you are in the word of God, you're in the promise of God, the devil comes and steals it away. So you can't believe. You can't believe. Oh, man. Oh, that thing happened to so-and-so. Ah, oh, man, it's not going to happen for me. You, you nullify the word. You do, your heart did not grasp it. If somebody has not given their life to Jesus Christ, it's an example of the one where somebody preaches to them about Jesus and it's just disdain and say, oh, leave me alone. I, I don't believe in Jesus. The devil came and stole that word. All right. The verse 13 says, those on rocky soil are the people who, when they hear, they receive it and welcome the word with joy. But because they have no family grounded roots in them, they believe for a while. In time of trial and temptation, they fall away and abandon their faith. Actually, he's talking about here, in the Mark trans translation, he's talking about people who, when temptation came for the sake of the word. So when they started going through challenges of life, they abandoned the word of God. They said, oh, the word of God doesn't work. They started looking for alternative, solu alternative solution. So these people, they received the word with joy. They said the word with joy. They were happy when the word came. Oh, where God has given the word, I received it. You know, have you been like that before? I, I know I've, I have been like that before. You receive the word, you are joyful, but you know, the, 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 the word you receive has actually not really gone deep into your heart, into your account, into your womb, into your, into your matrix. And because it hasn't gone there, you know, when things seem like they are not changing yet, you start to say different words out of your mouth. You start to vocalize words of defeat, words of doubt, words of hopelessness. But you forget though the challenges that you're going through came for to take that word from you, to take the promise of, of God away from you. That's why the reason why that thing came. But you see, when you have started to confess the word, believe in the word, you start confessing it, and you haven't seen results yet, don't allow your mouth to start saying other things that contradict what you are believing God for. Remember that the challenge, the the the, the challenge you're going through is for the sake of the word. It is, the, the challenge is not attacking you. It's attacking your faith in God. Attacking what you have believed in God. That's what this the, the challenge is, is trying to make you to do. All right. Okay. So, let's go to verse 14. The seed now, that is the word of God, fell among tongues. The one that fell among tongues, these are the ones that who have heard. But as they go on their way, they are suffocated with anxieties and riches and pleasures of this life. And they bring no fruit to maturity. See, he's not talking about the fact that God doesn't want you to have money. All right. So before somebody mis misunderstood, he's basically saying, when you heard the word, you did not, you know, you did not allow. Uh, you are so you are um, you are what's the right word? The person is too busy for to allow the word to become flesh in their heart. So because of that, they cannot produce fruit. So you heard the word, all right. Possibly you are joyful. You say, I have received a word from the Lord. But you are, you are distracted. You are f f running after too many things at the same time. That the words that God has spoken to you did not settle in your heart and become a belief system. That through which you then begin to filter everything that is coming to you. And such a person will not produce fruit to maturity. Okay. The fourth one says, there's a seed that fell on good soil. These are the ones who have heard the word with a good heart. They hold on tightly to it and bear fruit with patience. The word came, they hold on tightly to it and they bear fruit with patience. So this scripture is saying that the ones that have got a good heart. Now, by the way, if you have given your life to Jesus, you got a good heart. Because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, I will give them the heart of flesh. God says he's going to take the heart of stone away from us. And give us a heart of flesh so if you're a believer a child of god you have a good heart the problem now is are you aligning that good heart that you have to 
to receive the word of God, to hold on tightly to the word of God, to bear fruit with patience. That is where the thing is. At times, you know, the result will not come immediately, but you give yourself, oh man, the word of God doesn't work. Let me go start to find another solution. That is how it doesn't work for you. So here we see a couple of things. Number one, the word of God has the power to produce results in our lives, but the word of God is sown in the heart. Bible here says the seed is the word of God. So the word of God is meant to produce results, right? But it is sown in the heart. The rakam, the womb, the matrix. That's where the word of God is sown, right? But what if you look at back at the parable of the sower, the word is the, the sower sows the seed, the word is being thrown all over the place, right? But what is changing is the soil. There's the soil on the side. The one with thorns, the one on rock, the one with good soil. So, the heart is the variable that determines whether the word will work for you or not. This is where I'm going to. The supremacy of the word of God means that God created everything by his spoken word. But in order for that word to work in your life, your heart must receive it. The quality of your heart, the way you approach the word is what makes the word to work for you results are guaranteed if we hold on tightly to the word and we are patient with it do you understand what i'm saying but your heart is a variable so at times we hear the word of god we want the result the next day it doesn't work like that at times you need to be patient you need to keep affirming what you are farming and then as you stay there it's going to produce results the other day I was sharing with my children, I think they was talking to them about this scripture actually. I was teaching about something about it. And I was saying there was a song um, that they used to sing, uh, it's called Happy, you know, and you know, the first time they started singing that song, it was actually a good song, you know. But after a while they knew the song, they can sing it with their eyes closed. And I asked them the question, How did you learn the, the song? It was by listening to it over and over and again. And I said, it's the same way. The word of God, the confessions we're asking us to do in church, all these things we're asking us to do. Uh, it's not magic, right? But you need to persist in the affirmation. Don't say I affirmed yesterday. Uh, I haven't seen results yet for today. I'm going to abandon. I don't want to do it again. Quick, quick question: When you plant uh, seed in your garden, is it the next day that the things start to give you fruit? No. The Bible says that the word of God, the word of God is like that. It's, it's first of all, you plant a seed in the ground. It comes out. It has a trunk, and then it has some leaves, and then it has to produce results. So it is persistency. Right. Remember, if you have believed wrong for many years, you've got to allow the word of God to do his work. Right. You can't just say, I believe wrong for 15 years of my life. Listen to the wrong kind of message or that, that, I follow the wrong kind of religion or I've had a wrong view of God. And then overnight, you know, I've, if I don't see results in two months, I'm going to pack it up and say this thing doesn't work. That's not the way it is. People of God, you know, you have to persist in the word. You have to ensure that your confession, what you are confessing, does not contradict the image you are holding your heart. Listen, the heart must align with the word but the heart is where the work starts from the heart is where you study the image of what you want and then you begin to it begins to flow out of your mouth this principle of the heart and the mouth is also linked in the scripture here in second corinthians chapter 4 second corinthians chapter 4 verse 13 the bible says yet we have the same spirit of faith as he had who wrote in scripture i believe therefore i spoke we also believe therefore we speak you see what he's saying Belief, you must speak. So when you when Jesus Christ says, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks, he's essentially saying the same thing, he's saying what you have stored in your heart over and over, show up in the words you speak. You you cannot speak contrary to your belief system. And the belief is of the heart. Belief is of the heart. When you what you believe in your heart flow out of your mouth. So that's the reason why the image you hold in your heart is ultimately what you are going to produce. Romans chapter 10 verse 10 to 11, which is a scripture that we have used to let, ask people to give their lives to Jesus. But if you read on the underlying thing in this text as well, it's talking about, you know, the heart and the mouth with the word of God. Look at what it says. It says, with the heart, a person believes in Christ. A person believes in the word. Christ is the word made manifest made flesh the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god christ is the word so with the heart a person believes in the word resulting in is being made right free from guilt made acceptable to god essentially say when you believe in the word of god 
the word of God justifies you, makes you right, makes you to be in right standing with God. But you see, it doesn't stop there. He says, and with the mouth, the person acknowledges and confesses his faith openly. And what does what happen? It results and confirming salvation. Now, salvation here, you know, when we think it's just like giving your life to Jesus, it's not just that. It's talking about sozo, to be healed, to be delivered, to be prosperous. It's talking about the wholesomeness of what Christ came to give us. So essentially, the Bible says you must believe in the word of God spoken to you. That when you believe in the word of God, God sets you right with himself. God says there's no enmity between us. When you believe in the word that God has spoken to you, you must follow it up by speaking that word out of your mouth. When you speak that word out of your mouth, it will result in an experiential knowledge of salvation to have an experience that says everything in your life is working as it should. Why is that? Because verse 11 says, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him, whoever believes in the word, will not be disappointed. If you believe in the word of God, you will not be disappointed. How will you not be disappointed? You must vocalize what you believe because that is the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith says, I believe, therefore I speak. The heart and the mouth must speak what? The word of God. So that's the heart, the mouth, and the word connection. That is you stepping into the matrix. So when you step into the matrix, you are allowing your heart to believe in the image of success instead of failure, image of divine health instead of sickness, image of confidence instead of uh, anxiety, image of courage instead of fear. You are allowing your heart to paint that picture, that image, right? You pick it, but where do you pick it from? The Bible says faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you look in the word of God, the word of God paints pictures in your heart. You will take that pictures in your that the word of God is painting in your heart. Use that to replace the pictures that the world system is trying to paint in your heart. But you don't stop there. You vocalize that out of your mouth. That is really what we're talking about here. The heart must believe in the word. The heart must the mouth must speak that out. Proverbs 18:21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life are not in the power of God. Death and life are in the power of your own tongue. You get to eat what you say. If you say, I am broke, I'm sick, I'm hopeless, that is since that is what you are saying out of your mouth. Bible here says you are speaking words of death. And because that's the words that you're speaking are the words of death constantly you are hearing the words of death going through your ears those words of death you're hearing will paint pictures in your heart when it paints pictures in your heart your mouth will continue to say it again and again and after a while it becomes a belief system and then it produces results in your life death and life are in the power of the tongue those that love death and life or life or death will eat the fruit of it if you like speaking life you are going to eat life if it's like speaking death you are going to eat the fruit of death that is the way it works so the heart is always the starting point the heart is your matrix whatever is in the heart projects itself into our conversations and because our words are containers of power our words will speak what we have seen in our minds our words will project the image of what we have rest captured in our heart and it and it will go and produce result the bible says in the book of john chapter one that the word became flesh the word always become flesh the word always take off the nature of what it is spoken but for it to work for you you must hold the picture in your heart of what you want to create so when you speak you give life to situations in your life what are containers of power what you see is what you get. You must step out of the matrix of the world system and step into the matrix of God. How do you step into God's matrix? As a child of God, know first of all, you are already in the family of God. But to experience the beauty of the matrix requires for you to believe all that Jesus Christ died for you to receive. First of all, you must believe in your heart. You must believe in the word, in the promises of God. Then, to do the next thing would now be to begin to speak out that those promises out of your heart speak them out speak them out and then as you speak those promises out those promises will go out and because the words are containers of power those words will begin to create in your life that which you have spoken out and then 
as you can persist in that conversation, it will then change even your actions until you begin to act. So you begin to be able to do the word. So before you can become a doer of the word, you have to be first a confessor of the word. Confess what the word says you confess, and then you are going to get what the word says you get. I want to show you, a, 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 do an exercise with you as I begin to round up. This exercise is an exercise that I have done with my family. I've done it with my staff members in church. I've done, I've done it, I think, with some, some of my people that attend my success coaching platform. I think so, if I'm, if, not, if I'm not mistaken. But at least I've done it with my family and people in church, and people in the staff member in church. I want to just do that with you. Uh, if you are not in a place where you can close your eyes, then please don't do this. If you are, if you are driving, don't do this, this exercise. But if you're not driving, you are sitting, sitting at home watching this, maybe on your TV or whatever, then I want you to do this exercise. Now, the primary purpose of this exercise is to let you know that words paint pictures. See, we see in pictures. We think in pictures most of the time. When you start to think about your future, you start to see pictures, right? So that tells you that thoughts are pictures. Thoughts really are communicated in pictures, right? Okay, and words are also pictures. Words are also words paint pictures. Words paint pictures in our heart. Thoughts communicate pictures, all right? And pictures are nothing but images. Right? Remember what I said earlier: imagination, image that formed a nation. The image you hold consistently we form the nation that you are going to live in. When I talk about a nation you're going to live in, I'm not talking about going to Jamaica or going to Australia. You know, you're going to physically go to a physical nation. No, I'm talking about the, 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 the cocoon that you live in, you know, the, the, the sphere of influence that you live in while you're still on this earth, all right? The imagination you have is what's going to paint that for you. It's going to make you live in that place because that's what you're holding on predominantly in your heart. So I'm going to share this exercise with you for two minutes and then uh, I will wrap up the, the service. Praise God. Now, take a, take a moment, just, just breathe in, breathe out. When you breathe in, you know, breathe in for, uh, when you breathe in, count, you know, hold it thought. When you breathe in, hold it, count one to five, and then breathe out. The purpose of that is to slow the, uh, the electrons firing in your brain to slow it down, all right? So when it slows it down, then we can enter into what we call a meditation state, all right? So take, take a deep breath. Another one. Now I'm going to start talking. With your eyes closed, imagine it's your birthday. Your birthday is just around the corner. And you, th you think of, you know, having this birthday in a beautiful place. Suppose you want to go to the Burj Khalifa in, in Dubai. Suppose for a moment you were able to afford it and you rented a whole floor with the terrace you had family and friends coming over you've, you've decided to make this an all-white affair you know people have got to dress in white color you know white dress and stuff and then you've rented a big hall that that has a, a terrace outside a terrace outside where people can just have wine and drink and you just chill out now suppose you see yourself now walking in through the door as you f as you fling open the door of the of the hall that you rented you saw decorations everywhere. You saw people clapping their hands. You can see some of your friends' faces there laughing at you and just giving you a thumbs up. You looked at the left, you saw some of your friends, possibly some people that you went to school with, you know, maybe your primary school, some people that you've kept in touch with, you know. You're walking down the middle of this arranged chairs and, and seats. You can see balloons popping up on, on each table. People there were looking beautiful, resplendent in their white attire. And right in front of you on the ground was a uh, was a carpet you know like a red carpet kind of scenario you're walking on it walking on it walking on it yeah you, you can feel the love in the room you're so happy and excited you're so happy that this is the room this is the, it's your birthday you are the one who's the focus of attention just relish that moment relish the way you feel at the moment you know the joy in the room the peace and the love that people are showing you you know somebody kisses as you walk down somebody came and give you a hug and give you a peck and say well this is your day happy birthday darling happy birthday darling you have made it you have made it. god bless you you know you had accolades coming and on the on towards at, towards the back of the hall you know just where you see the the music people with their stands and playing there's there's a tree planted there and under, under the tree you have all sort of presents stuck up there and you can see love everywhere you're so happy you're so happy you're so happy now on the side on the right side of the 
of the of the hall towards the end you see a door the door leads to the exit there's an exit sign on top on top of the on, on top of the door you put it open and you got in into the terrace you know this big terrace was there people are sitting down and they enjoying themselves on top of the terrace there's a swimming pool you can see some of your friends you know uh in the bikinis or in their swimming swimming trunks they're swimming and they're just having fun some of them are raising up you know their glasses up to you and say hey Congratulations, we're happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you for inviting us. You know, you hear that. You saw on the, on the, uh, on the right hand side as you were walking in, in this terrace, you saw a, a barbecue stand. You know, people having, you know, making barbecue and serving people. Everybody was happy. It was a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. You look up in the sky, it was a beautiful blue sky. Beautiful blue sky. You know, you could see the sky was so beautiful. The, the hair was so, was so. Uh, filled with the fragrance of beautiful flowers you you drew a deep breath you just enjoy you are one with nature you are so grateful to God for how far he has brought you you you, you, you at that moment you thought about your life and what you you've gone through and how God has brought you through and you are so grateful your heart feel, feel your heart is filled with now with so much gratitude to God you began to just sing songs of joy you began to sing songs like you are worthy oh Lord you are worthy you're just singing songs as you lift up your eyes you can see from far off a helicopter coming the helicopter coming and on that helicopter there are some people in the helicopter and they were hold they were you know holding for the world to see uh, a banner and that banner says happy birthday with your name on it and they were waving at you from afar they got closer and closer and closer and you're so happy you're so happy and everything is fine everything is fine you're so happy you went closer and closer you move closer to the edge of the terrace and you can see a balustrade now you're holding the balustrade again looking at the sky and seeing the helicopter drawing closer and closer to you you took a deep breath Again, you are one with nature. You are so happy. Now open your eyes. Now this exercise I've done, I didn't finish it because I don't want you to panic. The exercise didn't finish there because there's another step there where the balustrade just disappears and you know you're falling, you're falling deep down onto the ground. It's almost like you're about to die. But what I wanted to point out here is, how did you feel doing this exercise? How did you feel inside doing this exercise? I'm sure you must be feel happy. You must feel joyful. You must be excited you know everybody where i've done this exercise for they feel alive they feel so happy but you know everybody who's done this exercise they've they've seen different things the feeling you may feel may be the same but the pictures you painted in your heart is different you cannot paint the pictures that i've painted in my heart when i did this exercise why because i choose the picture i chose the picture that i want to see so you can say, oh, it is just you. When you spoke to me, you are painting the picture. No, I didn't paint the picture. I was just talking to you. I was just explaining, expressing words to you. But you put flesh on those words by your own imagination. This is how imagination works. Whether from what that you spoke out of your own mouth, what you hear from other people, what you read, or what's going on in your heart, you are constantly programming your nation by the image that you are holding and God has given you responsibility to choose the right picture in your heart so God says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks out of the overflow of the image you hold in your heart you will speak it out so the heart the mouth and the word must agree in your life take the word of God for every image that is not right in your life today take the word of God find the word of God for it and speak it into your heart speak it out of your mouth it goes through your ears it goes into your heart over and over and over replace that image replace that image pull down the strong goals of the image replace it replace it. after a while it will become easier for you and as your heart then embraces the image of the future you see you begin to act it out then you begin to see wonderful results in your life praise god forevermore i know i've sort of overrun my time but i just want to to share this with you that the word of God is absolutely supreme it can change your life but the word of God must get into your heart the word of God must get into your heart how do we do that start with a scripture if I don't try to do like Bible in a year kind of stuff because at times some of us we don't keep to it right 
okay i've tried it myself a couple of times you know i didn't i didn't get it get to the end of it and you know what i start to do i just start to meditate on do, do you know like concept so for example if i want to do um re uh, redemption i focus on redemption i study that if i want to talk about forgiveness i study that that way i'm teaching concept i'm focusing on concept you know so don't try to say i want to do bible in a year and get get stuck if you can do it fine if you cannot do it just pick a scripture you see god is not measuring you by any standard pick a scripture meditate it we look at it and say god what does this really mean what pictures can i see here and god will show you pictures of what that word means then take that picture and use it to replace whatever picture is in your heart that is not working for you so for example if you're a fearful person you're afraid of what the future holds take scripture that says the lord is your salvation the lord is your shield and your buckler think about that and say what does a shield mean a covering what does a buckler mean a covering what does the salvation mean? Someone who comes and saves. Then see the picture of God as savior and covering for you. And then when they say, oh, why am I afraid? God, listen, God is my shield. God protects me from that arrow. So you've taken the picture of the God as a shield now to protect yourself from the arrow of the fear. Let that picture of God being your protect protection goes, go, go, goes into your heart and stay there. Meditate on it. Take that picture up in your heart. Paint it up paint it or paint it when this fear wants to come take this picture of god and say no i refuse that use the word of the picture of the word of god, of god as savior as protection protector stamp it upon that other image and to stamp it out over and over then say that of your mind god is my victory god is my protection god is my shield say that out of your mouth do you see what i'm saying now so as you take the word put it in your heart say that of your mouth over and over it's not going to happen like magic one day persist in it then after a while you will begin to realize that when the fear is about to come, that this other image that you have built up will replace it immediately and boom, you're going to start seeing results. Am I making sense to you? All right, so the art, the mouth, and the word must agree for things to work in your life. Praise God. Your imagination is the womb of your creation. Your imagination is the womb of your creation. And what you put in your Im Im imagination is you're putting it in your heart. Your heart is your account. Your heart is your womb. Your heart is your matrix. So I'm asking you, step into the matrix of God by filling your heart with the imagination of what God has already promised you based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. Blessings are yours in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray with you now. And there's a prayer I've got on the screen. If you just repeat that after me, say, Lord, I thank you that my heart is my rakam, is my womb of creativity. Thank you that life flows from my own heart. I also thank you that you have given me a new heart. Today, I choose a new image to plant in my heart. I meditate on this new image of my future and I allow the image to excite me. Lord, I now choose today, by your help, to speak life out of my mouth so that I will experience the life of God in the name of Jesus. So help me, God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for listening. Again, we ran over time, but I think this exercise is absolutely important for you to know. The exercise I did there was uh, an exercise to help you to fill your mind with positivity and if you can create positivity you can also create negativity right so but you need to choose so as you live here do this exercise yourself you can stand in front of a mirror and speak that about your future to yourself you know or you can sit down and just allow your imag imagination to go to the future and see that do that over and over and after what the world will become flesh praise god forever more next week i'm going to be talking about how to make your faith work all right so please make sure you come that we're going to start talking about faith you know a whole lot more so that you can you know begin to make this thing work for you in jesus name lord we thank you for today thank you for your mercies your grace your mercy your goodness your kindness let this word spoken today oh lord help your people to embrace the goodness of what christ has already finished for us help us to be doers of the word in the name of jesus thank you heavenly father in the mighty name of jesus if you're on the call on, on the call or you're on, on live church or watching this later and you want to give your life to jesus i'm inviting you right now to uh, please put your your hands on your chest and repeat after me listen to give your life to jesus christ is very simple you just need to believe in your heart that he died for you he paid a price for your sin and then you just need to invite him to be your lord and savior that's it but saying when you do that you are going to be saved so are you ready do you want to do that do you, to, do you believe that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you? Do you believe that it was he is the death he died, he died as you and he died for you? 
Do you believe that? What God said, that if you give your life to him, you'll be saved. Do you believe that? Okay, now repeat after me. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying in my place. Thank you for being the sacrifice that paid for my sin nature and the sins I've committed. I come to you and I give my life to you. Receive me as your son or as your daughter in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe you as my, as my Savior and now pronounce you as my Savior. Thank you for having me. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Welcome to the family of God. Please, if you need some support, send an email to our team, light at the lighthouse.org. We are going to you know, uh, reach out to you and try, we would love to mentor you and show you how to believe right so you can begin to walk in the newness of life that you now have. Praise God. Lord, as we go, Lord, we thank you that we're living here with, a, with an understanding of the matrix, that the matrix is our heart. And in our heart, we can have whatever we want by be choosing to believe your word. Your word is our numero uno, it's our north star, it's everything that we know we set our lives right. This week, oh Lord, we will walk in with the consciousness of the word of God. We will speak the word of God out of our mouth. We will plant the image of the word of God leading us and helping us and causing us to succeed in our hearts and lord we are going to witness and experience the goodness of god thank you heavenly father in jesus name we have prayed all right god bless you and i'll speak to you another time thank you for worshiping with us we hope you enjoyed the sermon we were blessed to have you we hope to see you again on wednesday for midweek service at 6 p.m uk time morning prayers every Saturday at 6 a.m. UK time and Sunday service at 8 a.m. UK time. The replay for today's service will premiere on YouTube at 10 a.m. UK time. For love offering, kindly use the bank details on your screen or you can scan the QR code on your screen to give via PayPal. We invite you to join our monthly Practicality of Grace series every first Wednesday of the month. The series features discussions with guests who take your questions and show you how to practically apply God's grace in different areas of your life. You can send your anonymous questions to the live chat on the website at www.thelighthouse.org. That is www.thelighthouse.org. Or you can send an email to light at thelighthouse.org. Would you like us to pray with you? Kindly click the link that pops up in the live chat and fill the form or you can visit our website at www.thelighthouse.org and fill the request form. You can now book a counseling or prayer session with Pastor Davis on Calendly. Visit the link on the website or in the description box and follow the instructions to book a session. Follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok on the username that is displayed on the screen. Don't forget to comment, like, and share our messages. Until next time, remain in your identity in Christ Jesus.
unlivable, unstoppable, immeasurable. Nothing can compare to you because you are God. God all by yourself. Nothing added, nothing missing. You are everything encompassing. And that's why I will praise you. All power.